Hello everyone, welcome to our video 10A. How many bedrooms are there in your house? This is one of my favorite topics since we're going to be talking about different parts of the house and lots of vocabulary for you. The objectives for today, number one, we're going to describe where you live and two, talk about objects and furniture in a room. As usual, we have three recommendations. Number one, pause the video at any time. Number two, take notes. Number three, make sure you ask your teacher any questions. Once you finish watching this video lesson, if there is something that is not really clear, make sure you take notes and ask your teacher. Okay. As usual, we have a video clip to share. This time it's a video clip from Buckingham Palace, the house of Queen Elizabeth in London. This is one of the most fascinating places. Uh, I want you to pay attention to the video clip and pay attention to every part of the house that we'll explain. Okay? There, is a uh, there is a link here. I want you to click on it so you can watch it. Once you finish watching it, I will be talking about the parts of the house, okay? As you can see, this is typically a really big house, you know, in America. And our questions that we can ask here are, where do you have breakfast? Do you remember that place? Is it the living room? Is it the kitchen? Bingo, kitchen is the one. What about this one? Where can you have a shower? shower in a bathroom very good so uh, in the following slides I will be showing you different areas of your house and the typical objects and appliances that you can find there okay so this is a kitchen as you can see uh, in the title in a kitchen you can find some of the objects from the left for example you can find a stove you can find an oven you can find a sink some cabinets and also not in the picture but in your house a fridge a freezer a microwave coffee maker and blender now let's talk about the dining room well in the dining room remember it's a place where you can actually sit and eat breakfast lunch and dinner with your family in the picture you can see chairs a dining table some coasters, remember the word for coasters in Spanish is portavasos. We have mats, like uh, individuales. Uh, not in the picture, but typically found tablecloth, curtains, vase, plates or dishes, silverware, cups, and glasses. Very good. Now, let's talk about the living room. The place where you visit, you get people visit, or you watch television, or you relax, right? So in this picture, we have some objects such as a sofa, an armchair, cushions, a coffee table, a lamp, carpet, photo frame, bookshelf, window, and blinds okay uh, for you uh, for those who don't know the word blinds in Spanish that's the word for persianas persianas okay let's look at the next place the bathroom the place where you take a shower for example in the picture we see some of the vocabulary from the left such as toilet sink shower Bathtub, that is like a very small jacuzzi, let's say. Mirror. And some of the objects we use to clean our bodies, like soap, shampoo, hair dryer, and, well, hair dryer is actually a machine, and lights, some lights at the top, right? And finally, we have our bedroom. This is a place where we sleep, right? We have a bed, blankets, pillow, nightstand, a comforter, a rack, and not in the picture, but typically found a closet and some pictures or photos, right? Very good. Now, every time we talk about the house, we necessarily need to talk about there is, there are. Remember that this is the verb haber in Spanish. 
if we want to say that something exists or doesn't exist, you know, we often use this form, there plus the verb to be. In this case, we're talking about the present tense, okay? Look at the example. There is a cup on the table. We can use the contraction for the verb to be is using the apostrophe. There is, there's a cup on the table, singular form. But what if it is plural? What if it is negative? There aren't any blankets in the closet. Negative goes, the negative form goes with the verb to be. And you can use the contraction as well. What if it's a question? Are there any cushions on the sofa? Remember that for questions, we typically use the inversion of the elements at the beginning of the question. We start with the verb to be, okay? Are there any cushions on the sofa? Yes, there are. Okay? Uh, in this chart, you can summarize the big idea here. We typically use their is for singular and countable nouns, and we typically use their are for plural countable nouns. So if it is only one object, you'll say there is a chair in the dining room. But if there are more than one, let's say two, three, or many, you can say there are a lot of windows in this house, okay? Now, let's pay attention to this picture over here. This is a bedroom. What things are there in this bedroom? If you pay attention to the information on the left, you see many examples in singular form. And if you see the examples on the right, you'll see those in plural form, there are, okay? So singular, there is a lamb, there is a bicycle, there is a painting, there is a bed, there is a backpack, singular forms. Remember to use the article a before the noun, before the object, a lamb, a bicycle. But if you talk about many or various objects, you have to say there are. Like there are pencils, right? There are dolls. There are balls. There are chairs. And there are pens. You see? That means that they are all in plural forms and therefore we use the verb to be in plural too. Don't forget that. Now, remember, this is a conclusion. When we talk about plural forms, we can also ask for quantity with the question form, how many, right? In questions like, how many lamps are there in the living room? And then when you answer, make sure you use the expression, there are, there are two. And then remember that if you want to ask for the quantity, in this case, of something that is non-countable, um, uh, then we have to use how much. Like, how much milk is there in the fridge, right? And then as an answer, you can say, well, there is some, there is little, there is one bag, for example. Okay? Be careful with the formula here because when we use how many, we need to use the plural noun after. And if you use how much, you have to use the singular form right after. Okay, now it's time for a little practice. Okay, In this practice, we have a short reading about Monica. I'm going to read this passage for you and after that, you'll have to answer just one question. Okay, my house. My name is Monica. I live with my family in Madrid, Spain. We have a sweet house. My house is big and beautiful. There are trees around the house. My house has two floors. The bedrooms, living room, bathroom, and kitchen are upstairs. The car garage is next to the backyard. My house has also a stu study in the attic. The rooms are light and spacious. We spend most of the time upstairs. Okay, I want you to identify uh, the most important information in this uh, paragraph and answer the question. 
How many rooms are there in Monica's house? Do you remember? If you need to go back to the reading, please pause the video now and take your time to do it. Once you do it, you identify five, six, eight. There are eight rooms in Monica's house. You'll see a living room, a bathroom, a garage, a kitchen, a bedroom, a backyard, study, and an attic. Very good. Okay, guys, that's all for now. Uh, as usual, we have some homework for you. Make sure you complete the video check-in below. There are some references in case you want to study a little bit more. And that's all for now. I see you next time. Bye. Universidad Santo Tomás, institución vigilada por el Ministerio de Educación Nacional.